year uh, fire blight has been a particular problem all throughout the Northeast. Uh, we had weather conditions that really encouraged the buildup of bacteria and the infection ar uh, infections around bloom. And when those conditions happen, uh, you need to take some action around bloom. And if you don't, you get into the shoot blight phase. Now, if you're going to do some protection, you need to focus on those varieties and those trees that are most likely to be damaged. So variety-wise, you look at things like uh, Gala and, and Honeycrisp. Um, Paula Red, those trees that uh, will be more likely to be infected. You look at rootstocks, particularly the full dwarfing rootstocks like M9, that uh, you need to pay attention to treating trees on those. And if you're dealing with a high density orchard like this one, you want to make sure that these trees uh, do not get infected if you're at all able to do it because a strike can pretty rapidly move from a blossom into the main stem and you've lost that tree. Uh, small trees, young trees in the age range of one to eight years old, you need to take extra care to prevent infections on those trees. And if you have fire blight this summer, uh, then remember that you're going to need to take a year long approach to managing fire blight, which includes dormant season treatments with copper, uh, includes having strep ready to go and keeping track of the weather so that you know whether there's going to be blight infections around bloom next year and going through and pruning in the winter to try to get rid of any old cankers. Uh, another trick you can use at this time of year is to go through with fluorescent paint or something bright and quickly spray paint anything that you see that you don't have time to cut out so that next winter you'll go through there and you'll pick it out uh, when you're doing your winter pruning. So it's a season-long effort. It's going to probably take uh, a couple of years uh, if you have fire blight in a block this year to knock it back down to manageable levels. Okay, this is a uh tree that's in a cider block so uh, it has some English varieties, some uh, American varieties in it. They tend to be more sensitive to uh, fire blight in part because they bloom late. And if you look where the infection started here you can see a blossom cluster. Now if these blossom clusters are on late and they aren't protected and the con environmental conditions are right for fire blight they become infected. The infection moves into the shoot and then you can see up here that the uh, shoot has a classic shepherd's crook and this has happened in about half a dozen of these shoots that you can see in this tree very easily. Now uh, the question is at this stage of the game uh, or earlier what should you do about it? This is blossom blight that is moving into shoot blight. There's two issues. One is you don't want it to move any further in that shoot if you can possibly stop it and the second is you want to uh, prevent travel from here to a shoot that hasn't yet been infected. Uh, we are less sure about how to manage that second part, the shoot blight phase, than we are the blossom blight phase. But for sure we want to get rid of this stuff. So we cut way back to what would be the most logical point. Now there's a lot of debate about whether it's worthwhile to sterilize between each and every cut on the pruning scissors. Uh, if your pruners um, are, you can, you can take a 50-50 uh, approach to that. I've read uh, articles that say, yes, it's a good idea. I've read those that say it really doesn't make any difference. If you are going to sterilize, uh, use an alcohol solution rather than a bleach solution. The bleach solution tends to rust things out. Uh, okay, here's a, an, another example of a tree that has the blossoms infected and the shoot has also started to go out. So the infection is probably in here. And if you wanted to cut it out, we would take the, we'd take the pruners, we'd go way back, make our cut down in this area. I'd probably take this whole thing right back to there, like that, um, and get rid of it. And next you want to deal with trying to prevent further shoot blight spread. As I said, we've got less of a handle on that than we do on, uh, on blossom blight. For chemicals, uh, we think that the, there are a couple of options that you can use. The standard recommendation would be to go and put streptomycin on again and again and again. 
The problem with that is that's the quickest way to develop resistance. In places like California, Michigan, the Pacific Northwest, where they took that approach to managing fire blight, in other words, summer covers of, of streptomycin every week or two, uh, they all have resistance to the chemical now. So we're trying to avoid doing that here in the Northeast. Um, what are your alternatives? Well, uh, none that are tried and true, but the possibilities include uh, Apogee. Now, Apogee is probably uh, more useful, in fact, definitely more useful earlier on. If you put it on at around the end of bloom, petal fall, uh, then you're definitely going to get an effect. At this stage of the game where growth has almost stopped anyway, uh, the jury's out on whether you're going to get much of an effect. Apogee works in two ways. It works to stop growth. It also uh, stimulates or produces a specific compound that's toxic to the bacteria, uh, but there hasn't been a lot of testing done for later stages of shoot bite. Uh, the other, another material that you could uh, use would be the phosphites, uh, uh, prophyte, anything that's labeled for disease management on apples. Uh, put that on. Uh, a third option is actually a combination of copper and mancozeb. Uh, the mancozeb added to the copper does something synergistically that seems to greatly improve the control of fire blight bacteria, at least in vitro. People have tried it on young trees and found that it does uh, do a nice job. Now, you're sacrificing the fruit both because of the days to harvest limitations on the mancozeb and because it's probably going to be pretty russeted by the copper, but that's better than uh, sacrificing the tree because you get spread of fire blight. Uh, another important consideration at this uh, stage when you're getting shoot blight infections is to not let the shoots on root suckers uh, get infected. The uh, best way to handle those is not by going through and cutting or breaking them off, which runs the risk of actually spreading the infection, but rather to use a chemical burn down. So you could use uh, some non-systemic herbicide like Paraquat or Scythe. Uh, particularly uh, high rates of NAA have also been recommended. Um, something that will burn those shoots out uh, and uh, stop them from being a place where the bacteria can infect, get down into the sensitive root stocks, particularly on smaller, newer trees where you've got things like M9, prevent that bacteria from getting in there and killing off the root and anything that's above it. Uh, another consideration at this time of year is controlling those insects which may play a role in spreading fire blade. We're, we're not exactly sure what those are. Uh, but we think that uh, the piercing, sucking insects like leafhoppers do play a role. So if you were going to go through on a regular basis uh, with your sprays, your summer sprays, keep the leafhoppers under control with something like a half rate of Provado, uh, and that will also reduce the spread of fire blight. Uh, small trees like this present a real problem because uh, obviously a few infections can um, pretty quickly destroy what you've got for a, for a new tree. Now, uh, these trees also oftentimes will have late blooms on them, and there are a couple ways you can deal with that. One is to run through with streptomycin on a regular basis until all the blossoming has stopped. Another way, perhaps more economical and uh, less likely to produce strep resistance, is to go through and actually prune off the blossoms, just pinch them off, pull them off, so that they aren't there providing the place where the bacteria can get in and infect.